Telltale's episodic series, The Walking Dead Season 1. Play this game. The bowling other show. I want to preface this with a couple of points. First, this will be spoiler free, so don't worry about that if you're thinking of playing this series. Second, I'm not doing a fully in-depth review because it would be very difficult to avoid spoilers in a video review of that length. That aside, here's why you should play this game. Telltale Games could be credited for breathing life back into the adventure genre. Thanks to them, Strong Bad has a game I put up that sign, but the stupid walls are still loafing all the time! And Sam and Max continue to live on in multiple seasons. Max is all short-term memory. I have to bring him back up to speed every once in a while. Ah! Giant talking dog! And as someone who grew up on the Sierra and LucasArts adventures of the early to mid-90s, I'm happy to see it back in such visibility. But their newest episodic series, The Walking Dead, is far and away the best series they have released to date. Like the popular AMC TV show, The Walking Dead is based on Robert Kirkman's comic book series. But this game is pretty much nothing in common with the TV show. Consider these adventures to be just a different group of people in another part of the country running parallel to the events in the TV show if you've seen that. What I mean is, nothing in one will spoil the other. If you've played adventure games before, The Walking Dead will feel familiar. You take on the role of a character, in this case protagonist Lee Everett, and guide him along by generally choosing to look at things, manipulate things, or talk to people. But there are things that make this title more special than any adventure games before it. In some ways, more special than any other games at all. For one, your experience through the five episode first season is likely to differ from just about everyone else's. The storyline branches in numerous ways based on decisions you make and The Walking Dead nails what is absolutely necessary in making these decisions impactful. And that is, they all exist in the gray area. It's never totally clear what the good and bad choices are. How about you help us clear the way and we'll take you and your daughter out of here and down to my family's farm. It should be safer there. I'm not a dad. I'm... A neighbor. Her parents are out of town. Let's get going. Staying put for too long is a mistake. In fact, you'll be presented with plenty of situations where they're both bad choices, but you have to choose regardless. And because of the choices you make, people live or die, people love or despise you, and people trust or distrust you. You make big decisions, and for every person you help, someone may get hurt. But there's one other mechanic that I feel is the most important of all of them. There's a time limit on making your choices. If someone asks Lee a question in The Walking Dead, you're presented with several answers, but instead of having an eternity to deliberate over the choices like in most games, you're given a time limit. If it expires, you say nothing in response to the question, which of course is an answer in and of itself and will garner a wholly different response. Who are you? I could ask you the same question. The amount of time given always feels short, so there's always a sense of urgency. But in some heated situations, you might only have two or three seconds. It's one of the most effective ways that Telltale turned this adventure game into a psychological thriller. That's not to say that there aren't problems here. It's not the prettiest game, though I ultimately feel that the hand-drawn art design choice is perfect to complement a comic book series. There are some visual glitches here and there, like the occasional jumping object, or some have reported that character models might disappear altogether, though I did not see this bug firsthand. But the most irritating thing in my experience was that the volume of each character's voice sometimes differed wildly from one to the next, even within the same conversation. It made it difficult to hear some of the speaking at some points, though the problem was rarely severe. Regardless, these problems are minuscule when compared to the overall experience through these five episodes. It's not difficult, at all, as it pretty much holds your hand all the way through. 
Instead, it places the challenge in the moral decisions you'll make, and those will be challenging in a way that you're not used to being challenged by a video game. As a result, it plays out more like a choose-your-own-adventure book with more interactivity. Each episode can usually be completed in a couple hours, so they make for perfect single-session experiences with breaks between. Look, this is one of those games where if you don't play it, you are most certainly missing something. The story is going to make you laugh, it's going to startle you, and it's definitely going to tug at your heartstrings. Even though the branching storyline suggests replay value, it's a game that I'm content not to play again, for all the right reasons. When you're finished, you'll feel like you've been through something. Telltale has announced that there will be a Season 2 of The Walking Dead, so take this opportunity to get The Walking Dead Season 1 on most any platform. I play it on Windows PC through Steam, but it's also available as a downloadable title for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, iOS, and Mac OS. If you're a gamer, you have at least one of these platforms, so do yourself a favor and play this game. <laughs> No! <laughs> <laughs>